section twenty one of messengers of evil by marcel elaine and pierre souvestre this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by don w jenkins chapter twenty one in a prison van in one of the rooms reserved for readers of la capitale jerome fandor was gravely listening to madame barat's account of what had occurred at her boarding-house during the night she had rushed off to tell him and to ask his advice what you tell me madame is truly extraordinary said fandor with an air of profound astonishment how did you discover that the police inspector who seized the trunk and carried it away was not a genuine policeman why through the arrival of monsieur Zavi, the police inspector of our district i know him there was no mistaking who and what he was and when i told him that the trunk had been carried off the preceding evening rather in the dead of night he guessed everything and what did he say oh he made us all come to the police station and i can assure you that he looked far from pleased you must admit dear madam that his annoyance was not without reason the police were made fine fools of in this affair but afterwards whom did he take back with him to the police station he took me and my manservant and when you got to the police station well monsieur fandor when we reached the police station he made us come into his office and there he put us through a regular examination just as though he suspected us but there must have been an accomplice in your house who let the robbers in said fandor i do not suppose the false police inspector forced the door open ah oh, but monsieur fandor here is something i do not understand nor does anybody else no they did not try to hide themselves not the least in the world they rang the bell they asked to see me they told me what they had come for and accompanied by my manservant carried away the trunk and had it put in the cab all in the most open and barefaced manner it was your manservant who accompanied them but most certainly and that very fact turned against jules in a very nasty manner poor jules just imagine the police inspector finished by ordering my house to be thoroughly searched from top to bottom and when the policemen returned without a why or wherefore they took jules away to another part of the police station i say i say oh it was all explained as soon as jules had gone the police inspector told me they had found keys in his rooms keys which could be made to fit any kind of lock whatever monsieur zavi was convinced that my poor jules was a burglar imagine it now you yourself madame are convinced of the contrary oh assuredly why i have known jules a very long time and in many little ways on many occasions he has shown himself to be strictly honest but those false keys those false keys monsieur fandor why i myself made jules buy them hoping to find among them one that would open my coach-house so that so that monsieur fandor the police inspector was obliged to agree with me that jules was honest and he released this servant of yours asked fandor his tone expressed annoyance no and that is why i am so distressed he said that provisionally at least my servant jules was to be considered as under arrest what ought to be done to get him let out but madam he will be set free to-morrow you may be certain of it no doubt he will all the same there is my house turned upside down and i need jules to help me to-night i really do not know what i shall do without him poor fellow i simply cannot imagine how it is they suspect him fandor said with mock gravity ah madam justice is sometimes so stupid so wrong-headed look here now would you like a bit of good advice telephone to messieurs barbey nantoul they are well known and powerful perhaps they would exert their influence in your servant's favour he might be set free this evening i you see am but a journalist and without a scrap of influence madame borat thought this a good idea fandor rang for an attendant take madame to the telephone left to himself the reporter could not help rubbing his hands i must get rid of this excellent woman who is certainly the most foolish person it has ever been my lot to meet good hearing that servant of hers is under lock and key things are going in the right direction but they are not going well for me if he confesses to-morrow when he is had up for examination then the police will have the information before me 
then too they are such duffers such bunglers that they are quite capable of giving that jules his liberty what the deuce must i do to prevent his being let loose and how am i to stop the judicial interrogation what a dog's life a journalist's is madame Borat reappeared monsieur nantour is not there she said but i got into communication with monsieur barbey he advised me to wait till to-morrow he said it was too late in the day to do anything but will he not intervene to-morrow i don't know to tell the truth i am sure monsieur barbey thought it very inconsiderate of me to disturb him about a matter in which he takes not the slightest interest that's a fact what possible interest can the bankers take in such a matter my advice was absurd fondor rose as he was seeing his visitor out he said in any case dear madam count on me to-morrow morning i shall call at your house about eleven if there is anything fresh we can talk it over oh here's jeanson de Selle college oh what detestable remembrances you conjure up but this won't do go it my boy i must play the part the plumber who had just given utterance to these remarks glanced sharply about him when he had made sure that there was no one close on his heels he stepped into the roadway and started on a zigzag course which seemed likely to upset his balance crossing the avenue henri martin going straight towards the town hall at the corner of the rue de la pompe the good plumber who was staggering more than a little began to stutter and stammer in a drunken voice it is the final struggle the passers-by looked around they sing the internationale in the streets now it seems remarked a severe-looking gentleman the workman turned to this correct personage what of it don't you think it a jolly fine thing then in a thick voice he continued to sing let us gather and on the morrow the severe and correct personage spoke my friend you would do better to hold your tongue you forget that there is a police station close by but the incorrigible plumber caught the correct personage by his coat-tails if i sing the international it's because i'm a free man ain't i a free man can sing if he likes can't he eh why don't you sing then eh the correct personage drew himself up stiffly tried to push the obnoxious plumber away the workman had now reached that stage of drunkenness when discussions tend to become interminable the gentleman pushed the drunken man aside saying come come go away leave me alone but the maudlin plumber was attracting the attention of the passers by his gestures he addressed the world at large would you believe it that fellow there don't want me to sing no well i'm going to and he started triumphantly it is the final struggle the policeman came out of the station with a solemn air he put his hand on the tipsy plumber's shoulder in a paternal fashion go along with you my friend come now pass along pass along but he could not make the plumber budge before he had finished his verse any more than he could teach him to walk straight on the spur of the moment leaving a hold of the gentleman's coat-tails the worthy plumber seized the policeman's arm oh you're a brother i have education i have you're a workman too i know as the police inspector pushed him off trying to make him go on his way the plumber put his arm around him no no show you're a workman sing with me it is the final the scandal could no longer be tolerated street corner idlers were gathering people were laughing at the policeman strong measures were necessary come now said the policeman yes or no will you be off and go home eh or shall i take you to the station you take me you take me why it would take four of you to take me there was no shilly-shallying after this wounded in his vanity the servant of the law did not hesitate all right said he and seizing the plumber by the collar although there was no attempt at resistance he dragged his prisoner toward the town hall of the district for the police station was there also some more game for the depot said the policeman as he passed the guard a fellow i can't get rid of are the cells full up other policemen came up an arrest in a peaceful district gives interest to the dull routine of the men on duty the cell's full go along with you there's only a small shopkeeper who had no papers thereupon the unfortunate singer who continued to stagger about was quickly pushed into the dark room called the detention room 
an ordinary everyday incident of the streets this arrest of a drunkard i shall have to write out a report for this fellow said the policeman who had arrested the songster and the salad basket footnote ten prison van passes in an hour's time i shall just do it have you anyone for the depot today asked the driver from his high seat on the prison van he was on a collecting journey as is usual every evening when the salad baskets as they are vulgarly called pass to the various police stations of paris to pick up the individuals arrested during the day two of em answered the police sergeant on duty whilst official papers were being interchanged and forms were being filled in according to rule policemen went to the cells to bring out the two prisoners to be dispatched to the depot the first to pass out was the costermonger he was straightway put into one of the narrow compartments in the salad basket then it was the turn of the tipsy and obstreperous workman who was now silent moody and apparently sober of it now cried the policeman come along with you you miserable drunk march now foot it as the drunk hit against the partition of the narrow passageway running up the middle of the salad basket the policeman with a shove pushed him into one of the compartments carefully shutting the little door on him and fastening it my word he exclaimed that fellow wouldn't have been capable of walking three steps in an hour's time as the driver climbed to his seat on the van the policeman called out with a laugh you have a traveller inside who doesn't detest wine it's a pity to see a man in such a hoggish state the same policeman would have been surprised could he have seen the bibulous one's face when the salad basket cast loose from her moorings and started off in the direction of the pont du jour police station the last one on the round to be visited the drunk whom one push had sufficed to plant on his seat had briskly drawn himself upright and was smiling broadly a wide noiseless smile what a joke and what a jolly good actor i should have made thought jerome fandor giving himself a mental hug of satisfaction ah they arrest the individuals i want to set talking the police imagine they are going to push in first and find out the answer to the riddle we shall see fandor was listening intensely and trying to discover from the movements of the salad basket what street they were passing along smooth going evidently we are still on the rue de la pompe so i have about a quarter of an hour more of it fandor examined the tiny cell in which he had been imprisoned of his own free will not much to be said for it ran his thoughts there is scarcely room to sit impossible to stand up or turn around nearly dark and precious little air comes in through those wooden shutters i shouldn't think there ever had been an escape from these vans fandor smiled broadly even if i don't succeed it is worth while making the attempt but i shall succeed see if i don't i settled it in my mind that i was to leave the cells after this costermonger he is in front of me therefore the cell behind me is empty it will be deucedly queer if at our two police station they don't put that confounded jules in it whom i intend to interview under the nose of the police i shall start talking to him by tapping on the partition in prisoner's language the fellow is pretty sure to be an old offender so he will know the system if he doesn't when we get to the depot i will push up to him somehow and get a few words with him if the depot is full we shall be stuck into the common cell until morning so i take it as certain that my interview with this true and faithful servant will come off and i shall get to know a good deal about the mystery as an afterthought it occurred to fandor that probably there had never been such a light-hearted occupant of this cell as he ah oh, that's the sound of the trams one jolt two jolts good the rails we are crossing the rue mozart we are going faster in five minutes we shall be at the Atu police station and there we can start our little operations there was one thing that attracted fandor's attention which was keenly on the alert there was a violent jolt and he had a distinct impression that the vehicle turned to the right why where the deuce are they taking us fandor asked himself to the boulevard exelmann station we had not reached the end of the rue mozart surely where did we turn then rue de ranelagh no there is a channel stone at the entrance and i should have felt it rue de l'assomption again no the roadway is up i should be knocked about more than this on my wooden seat we are going over a perfectly kept road which cannot have much traffic why of course it is rue de dr blanche isn't rue mozart barred at the end 
yes the driver must be going round by the boulevard montmorency ah well i am in no hurry there will be time enough for me to pay my respects to the illustrious jules just as fondor was thus congratulating himself he was thrown against the side of his cell the van seemed to have come into violent collision with some object and had tilted over to a considerable extent muffled oaths came from neighboring cells a stifled exclamation reached fondor's ears then louder still came the intermittent humming and snorting of a motor-car confound you can't you pay attention to where you're going keep to your right slightly stunned fondor heard someone knocking a voice asked are you hurt no but already the questioner had moved away evidently thought fondor the driver wants to know whether his human packages are damaged or not we have collided with another vehicle cheerful fondor's cell was now at such an angle that he could only suppose that the salad basket had had one of its wheels broken what a nuisance he murmured before they have finished their palaver as to how the accident happened and have repaired the damage we shall have been here a full half hour jules will be in a temper minute succeeded minute long interminable minutes and fondor could not hear clearly what was said what was being done to put the salad basket on its legs again the atmosphere of the little cell was becoming intolerable for the movement of the vehicle had driven fresh air inside the shutter and now that the salad basket was stationary the air was becoming almost unbreathable fondor's nerves were on edge it cannot be that they are going to leave us stranded here thought he ah now they have started repairs fondor noticed that his cell was gradually regaining its ordinary level a lifting jack must have been slipped under the vehicle for there was a melancholy creaking sound they must be putting the wheel on again no thought fondor after some time had passed never would i have supposed that it could have taken so much time to repair a salad basket why we shall soon have been stuck here for two mortal hours i hope it won't make any difference to our going to the depot nor stop my getting into close touch with that villain jules there was a further period of waiting then our exasperated journalist heard the driver pass down the centre of the van the van door slammed once more the salad basket was loosed from its moorings something queer is going on said fondor suddenly he felt certain that the van had turned completely round and was going in the direction it came from now where in the world are we going by what kind of a route are we making for that blessed police station there were spaces of asphalt succeeded by wood pavement then by hard stones then asphalt and wood again and turning succeeded turning whilst a new tom thumb was doing his possible to guess the route the salad basket was taking presently fondor gave it up he had to admit that he was completely lost which way the salad basket was going he knew no more than the man in the moon we have been trotting along for more than half an hour therefore we cannot be going to the boulevard exelmans police station the distance from the rue de docteur blanche to the point du jour is not great as fondor was murmuring these words the van slowed down turned around then with a bump and a jolt it mounted the footpath now for it said fondor this is certainly not the pont du jour station we are passing under an archway now we are turning again ah we draw up at last not too soon the van did stop again a wait fondor cocked both ears he wondered who was going to enter the cell next his then a man approached the door of his little cell where he was indeed cribbed cabined and confined inserted a key in the lock opened and shouted in a brutal tone out with you march quick now fondor had no choice but to obey the orders hurled at him but no sooner had he descended the steps of the prison van than he exclaimed by jove the depot this was not the moment to express all the surprise he felt at being landed at police headquarters in this fashion all round the salad basket the police were ranged in irregular order they shouted to him to be quick come on hurry with you hurry there fondor followed by the costermonger was pushed towards a little open door in the grey wall which led into a kind of office where an old frowning man was already looking through the papers which had been respectfully handed to him by a warder so you have brought only two of the birds remarked the frowning official yes superintendent good that will do turning to the warders the frowning little superintendent ordered take them away cell fourteen useless to rouse the whole place 
once more the warders pushed fondor before them as well as the poor costermonger they were driven into a dark corridor onto which a row of cells opened the head warder opened a door in with you my merry men you will be put through your paces to-morrow as the door fell to with a resounding clang jerome had inspected the place by the light of a lantern empty no luck my plan has been spoiled i shall not be able to interview jules philosophically jerome fondor was preparing to go to sleep on the plank bed which decorated one end of the cell when the little costermonger roused from his torpid condition began to moan and groan oh what a misfortune to think i am innocent innocent as an unborn babe what's to be done oh what's to be done the last thing fondor wished to do was to start a conversation with his lamenting companion he tapped the costermonger on the shoulder good heavens man the best thing you can do is to go to sleep take my word for it without puzzling his brains any further over the enigmas he wished to get to the bottom of fondor stretched himself on his plank bed and was soon sleeping the sleep of the innocent monsieur fusilier looked perplexed you fondor you arrested but am i going mad our journalist had been taken from his cell at eight in the morning and had been conducted to the office of the public prosecutor here the acting magistrate in conformity with the law wished to put him through the examination which would establish his identity all arrested persons have to submit to this interrogation within twenty-four hours of their arrival at the depot jerome fondor had given his name at once and in order to prove the truth of his statements he had asked that monsieur fusilier should be sent for so that the magistrate might vouch for his identity and say a word in his favour monsieur fusilier had hastened to the depot had taken fondor to his office and had anxiously questioned him why he asked had the police been obliged to arrest him for drunkenness in the open thoroughfare when fondor had concluded his statement the magistrate exclaimed your ruse is inconceivable i must compliment you highly on your ability and your detective gifts i wish i could agree with you replied fondor in a depressed tone in spite of everything i have not got into communication with jules but monsieur fuselier have you interrogated him yet the magistrate shook his head alas my poor friend you have no idea of the extraordinary events of the past night evidently notwithstanding the fact that you played a passive part in them i played a part extraordinary events what the deuce do you mean i mean dear fondor that all paris is laughing over it the police have been tricked you have been tricked did you not tell me just now that your prison van had had an accident do you know what really happened i ask you to tell me your vehicle was run into by a motor-car the driver was extremely clumsy or very capable what's that fondor leaned forward keen as a pointer on the scent it was like this replied monsieur fuselier your salad basket was very badly knocked about by the collision the driver could not possibly repair it single-handed he telephoned to headquarters help was sent at once and he had orders to drive to the depot as soon as he could he was not to trouble about the boulevard exelmans station that for once could be cleared the following morning unfortunately the telephone messages and replies had taken up a certain amount of time when they telephoned to the boulevard exelmans station from headquarters to warn them not to expect the injured salad basket the depot man who was telephoning was extremely surprised to hear that the salad basket had already passed on to the atul station and had taken away the arrested individuals there notably this famous jules i never calculated on this cried fondor the truth is my dear fellow that salad basket of yours was not knocked out of action by an unlucky accident the knockout was intentional was carefully planned it was done to stop your van from reaching the Autul station while your basket was being repaired another basket appeared at the Autul clearing station this if you please had been stolen it was standing before the palais de justice two accomplices took possession of it and drove away the daring rascals were suitably disguised of course they produced false papers at Autul, got them endorsed went through the regular forms and carried off the men from the detention cells under the very nose and eyes of the superintendent himself what became of the stolen basket snapped fondor it was found at dawn near the fortifications and need i say empty so that jules has escaped 
as you see and the car which intentionally knocked my salad basket out of action whose was it monsieur fusilier smiled oh it's a queer affair in fact it may lead to the wind-up of all the delon business we may now get to the bottom of that series of crimes you will never guess who is the owner of that car fandor no i am no good at guessing riddles just now besides i hate them fandor was nettled exasperated we got the number of the car from a witness of the smash-up and we have verified its correctness well my dear fellow the owner of that car is thomery thomery gasped fandor yes i have summoned him to appear before me the summons has just been issued between you and me i think thomery is guilty when he appears here in say an hour from now i shall issue a writ of arrest against this sugar refiner financier and we don't know what else but no sooner had monsieur fusilier finished his statement a statement which he fully expected would strike his young reporter friend dumb with amazement than fandor threw himself back in his chair and roared with laughter the magistrate was taken aback but what the devil do you find to laugh at in that fandor had already checked his hilarity oh it is nothing only fusilier i ask myself if really and truly monsieur thomery who is a very big fellow solidly built has been able to discover a dodge by means of which he can leave jacques dollon's imprints here there and everywhere but he does not leave jacques dollon's imprints because dollon is living because he came to see his sister why you admitted that yourself why of course it's true jacques dollon is alive i had forgotten thomery can only be his accomplice then declared fandor and as monsieur fusilier stared at him astonished at the way he had received the sensational news of the night fandor rose to take his leave my dear fusilier will you allow me to express my opinion monsieur fusilier nodded well i am sure that with regard to this affair there are more surprises in store for us you have not got the answer to the riddle not yet with that fandor smiled and bowed and left the magistrate's room he quitted the palais half smiling half serious what was he going to do next end of chapter twenty one read by don w jenkins rancho san diego california shaggybark.blogspot.com